Robert's considering purchasing a bond with a face value of 5,000 and a coupon rate of 8% due in 10 years. That means a 10, 10 year maturity on the bond. Inflation is expected to be 5% over the next 10 years. Robert's real MAR is 10% compounded semi-annually. What is the present worth of this bond to Robert? Okay, so again, you know, these problems can be overwhelming when you first read them. You just have to read it like a detective and take the information out as you come across it. So, so bonds, we know bo a bond, remember, is a cash flow diagram, right? So a bond is a cash flow diagram. And this particular one is 10 years, but we also know that the coupon payments are, are every six months, unless we're told otherwise, which means I'd have 20 six month periods of cash flows. I'm just gonna draw 20. Let's see how I can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so that's 20. And then we're gonna have a coupon payment because, because we're experts on bonds. We know that we'll have all of these coupon payments and they're up arrows. And you should remember how to calculate the coupon payment of a bond. Isn't it just the, we're given a coupon rate. So you take the face value. Oh, and we also get the face value. Don't forget here, we get $5,000 at 20. So I think someone's already given an answer. I assume that might be the answer for the coupon payment. So we, for the coupon payment, we take 5,000 and we divide by the, the payment you know, we multiply by the coupon rate, we divide by two, right? That's our, that's the formula for a semi-annual coupon payment. Is that right? And is that $200, which is what someone has suggested, right? So our, our coupon payment, which is an A, we'll say is $200, okay? Um, we're also told Oh, and, and then I should just also mention here that N, remember, it says it's 10 years, but for a bond, that means N is 20 because our coupon payments are every six months. Um, inflation is expected, expected to be 5%, but I guess, but that's an annual rate. That could cause a problem for us. I hope I can get this right. 5% is an annual rate. And then we have a MAR, we have a real MAR. Mar real for Robert is 10%, but it's compounded semi annually. Okay, so if his Mar is compounded semi annually, well, I have a feeling that we'll have to calculate his Mar for a six month period. So let's just say that that's going to be 5%. every six months, right? Because if it's 10% compounded semi-annually, it's 5% every six months. Um, and really the questions always say, what, what's the present worth, right? So we're, gonna, we're always gonna calculate for bonds. We're always interested, you know, what's the present worth of the bond? So this is, this is what we're trying to find. So uh, if, we, if we try to calculate the present worth, we're going to need so these so so with a bond it's actually pretty clear with a bond because these coupon payments these are they're almost like real dollars not real dollars they're almost like actual dollars bills right so so you know that both the face value of a bond and the coupon payments those have got to be current and actual cash flows so you, remember you take the coupon to the bank and the bank would give you that the, the dollar bills that correspond, they give you $200 bills and they do that every six months. So those are definitely current dollars. Same thing with the 5,000 face value, current dollars. And remember, if we have current dollars and then we have a, a real interest rate, then it's pretty clear that we have to calculate a current interest rate. I think anyway, that's, that's what I would suggest. Um, and the book really can't help me here, but um, if I said that the current rate, 
and, and maybe this is where I kind of messed up the other problem because I think this is how I approach the other problem. The current mar is going to be be equal to the real mar uh, plus the inflation rate plus the extra small term of the real mar times the inflation rate. And if you work that out, um, we'll, we'll do this. We're, we're going to do it for 20 periods. So we're going to have to make this a semi-annual. Okay, so if this is a semi-annual rate, uh, it's going to be my my MAR is 5%. What should I do for what should I do for the inflation rate? Right? The inflation rate of 5% is quoted as an annual rate. But I can't use an annual rate if I'm calculating a semi-annual rate here. Um, I mean, you know, normally I wouldn't do this, but for these low rates, I would say, let's just use 2.5%. I don't think it's, it's off by that much. You could determine an effective six month rate, which should just be what interest rate compounded once would give you 5%, right? So we're gonna, so, so um, I mean, I guess it's not rocket science, but I'm gonna just, so I guess that would be 2.25%, per 0.05, oops. Um, okay, so the difference, so I could use 2.47%, or I could just use 2.5. I'm just going to use 2.5%. And at this point, if you're on an exam, uh, you know, I would just I would just write in here something like just say, you know, assume. Just because. Uh, and then and then you've got in here, you'd have 5% times 2.5%. And again, that will be a small term. If you work out what that is, I think I did work this out, but let me just do it again. Um, I get 7.625%. Anyone else get 7.625%? I gotta brighten that up a little. 7.625. Uh, not compounded monthly, right? This is compounded semi-annually. Right, so if we're if we're compounded semi-annually, that means we can we need a, a rate. So technically, this would be 2.49, 2.47 or something like that. I forget what I said. I'm just going to call it five just to make it simple. Okay, so so now this is the current mar semi-annual. Okay, so someone else got the same answer. Okay, good. Okay, so if that's our semi-annual interest rate, I should be able to put that into the time value of money equation that gives me the present worth of my current cash flows. And, and, and I, I probably got enough room here. Let me just try this. Um, so the present worth, I think you can still see that, is going to be equal to, uh, let's do the the 200 times the p given a factor and for the and for that interest rate we're going to use the what we calculated 7.625% for 20 years plus 5000 times the p given f this is our face value that we receive over here, we're going to bring that back 26 month periods. P given F for 7.625%. 20. Okay. So, so I hope you, th this is just regular time value money stuff that we've already done in, in bonds, where this is the this is the coupon payment compound interest factor for the annuity, 20 periods, six month rate that we calculated here, the current rate. Uh, that's the 5,000 is the face value that we get 20 periods down the road, right? We use the P given F, add those because we're trying to find present worth. We add those two things together. 
and that's more complicated. Okay, and, and you'll have to use the formula for P given A, right? So the P, P given A formula, P given A formula. Uh, so someone's asked if you got a question like this, use 2.5 instead of 2.47. Yes, absolutely, but just say this. And then that's that's totally okay, totally okay. Okay, so the P given A, so your one plus I to the N minus one over I times one plus I to the N, right? That's our P given A factor, right? Let me just move that up a little bit. Okay, that's our P given A factor. If you plug in 20 and 7.625 here, I think you should get a compound interest factor around 10, 10.0983 plus 5,000 times 0 0.23, 000, or 3,000. $170. And I'll put a little approximate sign there like that. Okay. So, so thank you very much for the person who got exactly the same answer as me. I actually did get 3169.68, exactly the same thing. I just rounded up to 317. But remember, as, as the previous person in the chat pointed out, we did make this sort of simplifying assumption here. Um, I, I guess in hindsight, it would have been almost as easy to just use the proper value of 2.47 here, because it just would have been would have been simple in that equation. We had to do we had to do the long way around anyway. So um, yeah, two point someone has 2.4695. Yeah, that that's exactly right. Right. So you're going to take the square root of 1.05. Um, yeah. Two, so. Um, so I'm happy that people are comfortable calculating the effective six month rate on that inflation. So, so, um, but, but anyway, I just, I simplified it a little bit, but um, really what's important is that you recognize that the cash flows in a bond are current dollars. So we need to calculate the current MAR, 